Lords of War, Orcs vs. Dwarves, Volume 1. Written by Martin Vaux and read by Tom Barrett. Part 5. The Roar. With the dwarf homestead in flames and fresh blood on his lips, Ugluk Horsekiller gathered his force and led them away from the blaze. There had been only one dwarf on the farm, which had proved a deep disappointment not only to him but the entire company. The bloodlust of his fellow orcs had been somewhat satiated in the slaying of cattle. They had wrecked buildings and outhouses and burned fields of damp, lifeless grain, but he, like his kin, was hungry for dwarf blood. Hungry for spoils and murder most brutal. Ugluk had been part of the Eastern Campaign, led by the Orc High Chieftain. Daily they had raided and pillaged. Hundreds of dwarfs had been slain. They had strung them up, beaten them, devoured them, burned them and dismembered them. The chaos and the mayhem, the fires and the drums, he had never felt so alive or so much himself. Those eastern territories had each fallen after days of fighting, if not hours. Sun had followed moon, moon had followed sun, and all the while the children of Orcus had raged and slain and bombarded. Through the endless smoke and clanging of weapons, the shattering of the stone of city walls, and the snapping and twisting of bones beneath broken flesh, he had been part of the roar. That low, grunting animal howl which had spewed out of the mouths of every orc and goblin for what seemed like endless chasms of time, and he had been part of it. He had helped fuel it, had stoked the fires of that rage. He had thrown everything he had ever been or ever would be into each relentless punch, each club blow, each blade thrust or spear lunge. In one raid, he had found his armour. A dwarf guardsman of some kind had been wearing it, and he had ripped off the dirt eater's helm and killed him in a flurry of deepest joy. He hadn't thought about the killing, nor even noticed what he'd been doing. He had just acted. Every moment presenting a new opportunity, the chance to embrace ever so much more the orc he was destined to be. When the red mist had cleared, and that guardsman had fallen, Ugluk had felt the whole war go quiet. The roar had slid to the back of his mind when he looked at those greaves, that breastplate, the spear of burnished steel. He remembered how he had ripped each armour piece off of that dwarf's carcass, hastily strapping them onto himself. Other orcs had tried attacking him after that, making attempts to steal the black iron armour for themselves. He had fought them off, one after the next. Before he knew it, he wasn't just an orc. He wasn't just part of the roar. Suddenly he was Ugluk Horse Killer, captain and commander, trusted by the High Chieftain. Suddenly he was an orc that was respected and feared by the rest of his kind. Time had passed and the battles had raged on. The High Chieftain had given him the duty of breaking cavalry lines. Boars, bears and horses had all fallen, roaring and groaning at the end of his spear. The blissful sound of wet intestines hitting the earth became like music to Ugluk then. It was the sound he lived to hear, a chorus of rich, sweet agony. And then, one day, the roar had ended. The High Chieftain had decided that there had been enough war, enough murder and enough mayhem. The long march home had begun, but Ugluk, when his tribe returned home, had seen the same rocks the same caves and same shadows, and had known straight away that he was no longer the same orc. The roar had awoken something in him. It was a thirst for murder that nothing else could satisfy. There had been no more feasts then. Day after day led to talks and to fights, not fights against foes, but orcs fighting orcs. War had been planned, boats built and destroyed, plots for revenge and disunity and wrath had replaced the sweetness of battle. It was then that the Longtooth had come. From tribe to tribe he had journeyed, looking for fighters, fiends and rogues. His silver tongue had drawn orcs and goblins to his cause and he had promised them glory and fresh dwarven blood. And so Ugluk had followed him. They marched north, away once again from the burning mountains. Their path then turned up the western coast, where they found dwarf keeps abandoned, wailing in the cold, bitter wind. 
Onwards they had marched, through valleys and scrub, over hillocks, through tombs and black mines. All along their journey there had been no dwarves, no murder to be found, just decay. So headlong they had journeyed, to places where they could smell dwarves on the wind, right at the edge of their senses. Into the grasping marches, through the green marsh-light gloom, past weak burning fires seeping up half-dead from the belly of the earth. Moon after moon they had spent running, stopping only to hunt or to rest. Doubt had crept in, and plots once again had formed in the minds of the rabble. And yet now they were close, and he knew it. They had met the one dwarf and slayed it, a single male with no fight in him, but a dwarf it had been, and that meant there were more dwarves to come, and the smell of dwarf on the wind was growing stronger. It was a trail, thought Ugluk, leading them back to the roar. He could hear it faintly whispering, right at the edge of sound, nestled between the wind and the rain and the mist. As he pushed on, barking orders at the orcs by his side and the goblins that strode in their wake, he knew it was not long until they would be at it again, breaking and burning, eating and drumming. But first Longtooth had to prove he could lead them. First the old orc needed to call a Karl Uni.